Hello, and welcome to The Swamp. The Swamp is an acronym. Stands for some whack-ass movie podcasting. And welcome back to any regular listeners, and welcome to any new listeners. We're happy to have you. <laughs> my name is Dara, and I'm here with my lovely co-host. Emily, how's it going? <laughs> um, and I'm so excited to talk about this movie with you today. So we have been doing this month, ooky, spooky, kooky, mm-hmm. more like autumnal Halloweeny vibe mm-hmm. movies, but like nothing explicitly Halloween or horror, really. Yeah, it's, um, it's, it's whatever gets it, you into that fall feeling. Right, it's all about the vibe, and I think the, I prefer, like, I prefer a, a vibe-based movie rather than a, like, this is a Halloween movie, you have to watch it Halloween, you know what I mean? 110%, like, a lot of it, too, like, I know I've talked to people and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'll tell them a couple of things and people will be like, oh, you're not doing any horror movies? No. This is not the <laughs> podcast for a horror movie. Absolutely I mean, we've, not. We've done, like, Midsummer and uh, and um, we've done The Shining. And, and I, I, I Have won't... we done The Shining? We haven't done The Shining. <laughs> Oh no, we've done Silence of the Lambs. Sorry, we've done Silence of the Lambs. But I but I, I wouldn't like, be I against No, I wouldn't be against doing uh, again another A24 horror yeah. or something like The Shining, but like straight up like Mike Myers slasher no, movies. Not just happening. not Yeah. It like couldn't be me. Could I watch Halloween? Yes, for Jamie Lee Curtis. And that's it. For Jamie Lee Curtis alone, but this podcast would just be the two of us drooling. Exactly. And you wouldn't get anything of good substance. Yeah. So, um, but so, Uki Spooky Hoogie, and I'm so excited to talk to you about Coraline today because <laughs> this is one of my favorite movies <laughs> of all time, and you've never seen it. So, I'm yeah. really fucking pumped. Um, I would say, like, I don't believe in favorite movies. If somebody asks you, like, what's your favorite movie? I just don't think that's an appropriate question. But, like, to top five somebody. or something like that? Right. Or even rank. But I think of it as, like, a percent. Like, mm. this is in my top one percent, right? Mm. Because different movies can serve different, like, emotional purposes, mm-hmm. right? Like, your movie can be, a fa- like, a favorite for one reason, where another movie, like, is a favorite for an entirely mm. different reason. I don't know. But so I don't really believe in, like, you know, a top ten or a top... More just like a, you know, the the upper echelon, the top of the pyramid, the S tier, basically. <laughs> it's and a this, spectrum. It's a spectrum. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so Coraline is definitely in my top 1%. Mm. Um, obviously, it has a lot to do with nostalgia. I saw this movie, with, like, at, I was 11. Like, Coraline's 11, and mm-hmm. I fully was uh, 11 and so saw you, this. Yeah. You I identified like, right away. <laughs> yeah, and I'd read the book, like, big oh. Neil Gaiman fan. And so... The, this movie obviously like was I was super into it when I was in like you know fifth and sixth grade mm-hmm. and then it just sort of was one of those things that I never you know how you feel cringe about the things you used to like like mm-hmm. I never felt cringe about being obsessed with Coraline mm-hmm. I was like no this movie fucking slaps and I stand by it um and I probably do watch it like at least two or three times a year because it like definitely comfort movie for sure yeah it's one of those movies too it's such a good movie that like it's, I feel like it's hard to feel cringe about it because it was so well done. That's one of the things that, like, as a first-time watcher, I really picked up on. I was like, I don't I don't even know if it was sort of branded as a kid's movie. Like, that's how I remember it. But it is definitely, like, not. <laughs> yeah. This, one, this I, movie gets really dark really fast. <laughs> yeah, I remember a lot of people being like, this is not appropriate for children. This is horrifying and, like, not... This is not for kids. But, like, if you were the right kind of 11-year-old, yeah. it was. Mm-hmm. But it was very specific, like, it, it was a little scary for for its target audience. But yeah. I don't necessarily think it was just for kids. I think it was for everybody. It's kind of like how Nightmare Before Christmas is for everybody. Yeah. You know? Mm-hmm. You can kind of peg nowadays. I, I think that you can divide adults into two groups, which is people that loved Coraline as a child, and you can clock them from a mile away. Or people who... <laughs> Never even saw it or didn't care to see it. I thought you were going to say um, people who love claymation or people who are, like, physically repulsed <laughs> by claymation. I want to I wanna do a um, an episode sometime um, with you and um, Alyssa, my twin, because you two, you are crazy about claymation. You really love, like, anything that's, like, practical effects kind of thing. Alyssa's horrified. Anytime I bring up, like, Chicken Run, or, like, <laughs> what is it, Wallace and Gromit, yeah. oh she, you can God. see her body just tense up. 
What about we could do like James and the Giant Peach because that's half and Ooh. half. So yeah. Alyssa can Alyssa can cover the human half and I can cover the claymation yeah. half. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which one... is also um, directed by Henry Selleck, the same guy mm. who did Coraline. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no. James and the Giant Peach feels like it has a very distinct claymation style, and I will say that about Coraline as well. That's one thing that I realized like pretty quickly. I was like, I know it's claymation, but it feels different in a way than any other claymation that I've ever seen. It was really different for the time because they it was the first um, claymation movie ever released in 3D in theaters. Oh my god. So um, they had no claymation or stop motion movie had ever been, you know, attempted to be released in 3D. And also they, I don't know, they just went about it in a way that had never been done for stop motion. They, everything was like, they built all the sets. So everything you see is handmade in mm. every single shot. The backgrounds, the sets, the characters, the little sweater she wears was hand knit with knitting needles the size of human hairs. Like no way. everything single, yeah, every single thing you see in the movie was handmade by a person. And I guess it was, um, so like, I don't know, not to get into like me geeking about like a studios, but th- it's the production company that produced Coraline was, um, this was the first big movie they did. And it was because they were sort of a smaller studio and they did a lot of commercial work and other things. And Phil Knight, the CEO of Nike at the time, <laughs> bought this studio. And so he bought this production studio because his son wanted to be a animator like a claymation guy so he basically gave this phil knight gave this studio to his son who's now the president it's like a birthday and present he, yeah son, right and I he bought ended you up a um, studio <laughs> he he directed that movie kubo in the two strings oh, yeah, uh, yeah. which was also produced yeah so but this studio basically was like kind of experimental and wanted to like mm. really pave the way as far as like doing technologically things that had never been done because at this point in time not a lot of people were really thinking that stop motion would be successful Mm -hmm. because 3d or like you know cgi Mm -hmm. animation had come so far this movie came out in 2009 so like the animation in 2009 wasn't horrible yeah it was like rounding the corner sort of you know what i mean so they were like either you have to do your movies live action or you have to do them like totally digital cgi animated yeah they're like this is stupid but they like really stuck to their guns and they're like no you don't understand like the really great if we put a lot of time and innovation into it like the things that we can get out Mm -hmm. of this and they're like okay i guess whatever you say they did a lot of 3d printing Mm. to like so they were able to do things with stop motion basically that had never been done before Mm -hmm. it's my little speech about no and you can definitely tell studios it's hard to clock exactly why it looks so good but like knowing what you just told me i'm like yeah no that adds up yeah because it is it's like if you look at this and you look at chicken run they're just they're on two entirely different (laughs) planes of claymation yeah yeah Yeah. We should. We, but we um, need to, for anybody, if, we we should tier list um, claymated movies. Yeah, yeah, right. But for anyone who's interested, uh, Leica Studios has a lot of really great stuff on their YouTube channel about like how mm. this and a lot of other of their movies, like like the making of, mm-hmm. and just like watching people put it together. I personally find it so interesting. So if you're a Coraline fan or if you're a claymation fan, definitely checking out their YouTube channel. It's like they're like eight or nine videos that were literally made in 2009, mm. like when this was being made. So they're like not. The the most amazing quality but there's it's still really cool to like i don't know hear people talk about like yeah we have eight thousand wigs for Coraline because her hair needs to be perfect uh-huh. in every scene like yeah. things like that it blows a little to the left when the wind is going to the left <laughs> yeah right yeah um but so what what are your like initial because i i prefaced before i was like i know as a first time watcher at age 22 Mm -hmm. you're not gonna have the same like deep-seated love as Mm -hmm. that i've had for the past decade of this movie so i'm not offended if you're like this isn't the greatest thing i've ever seen like i get it but i do i want to hear your thoughts um it was really good i I was first things first i think uh the thing that sticks out to me is just how impressed i was generally like with the technical aspects of it and just how creative of a film it was and stuff like that Um, I was really impressed with, like, the side characters and just, like, how interesting every single character was, generally. Um, So, like, stuff like that. Um, I liked it a lot. I don't think I was super invested in it until, like, the little ghost children came up, which we'll talk about later uh, when we do, like, a little recap. Yeah, the, the thing that, like, 
I really took away is just, like, I was really impressed with the movie. Like, did I love it? Like, was it one of my, is it going to be one of my favorites now? No, but it was a really great movie, and I really, I don't know, I had a fun time watching it. Like, a lot of, like, other movies can't hold my attention in a similar way kind of thing, because there's just Mm. so much going on, and it's very, like, fantastical kind of thing, stuff like that, so. It's, to me, it's one of those that the, um, the style supersedes the substance to an extent that I don't care what's happening. Mm -hmm. Like, I I do think it's an interesting story, and Mm -hmm. it's a... You know, and it has a lot of different, you know, interesting aspects to it. But, like, literally, this could be the most boring story ever. Mm-hmm. But if it looks like that, I still... It's kind of like Wes Anderson in that way. Yeah. Where I'm like, I don't care about the plot. It just looks no, so nice. Exactly. Like, it looks so nice, it's going to be pleasing to yeah. me in the end. No, you're so so right about that. And I think very few movies can do that. Mm-hmm. Like, that are so nice to look at that the story can be absolute horse shit. Yeah. Um, I will say, like, I liked it because I hated the character of Coraline, but I still really enjoyed the movie. So if I can still like a movie, like, a lot, while I hate, like, the main character... It's like Lady Bird. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. She's very Lady Bird. Yeah, Yeah. exactly. Um, Well, like, she is, she is just, like, an irritating 11-year-old girl. Yeah, it's it's the issue of I hate kids. (laughs) Yeah, 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 right. So I definitely, like, I probably would have liked her character better if I saw this when I was 11. Um, Mm -hmm. But I am not 11. I am twice her age. (laughs) (laughs) And fuck them kids. (laughs) Like, why me too? Oh, my God. (laughs) Um, So should we do a semi-quick recap? Because I yeah at this point... Lightning fast. mm, (laughs) Lightning fast. You promise? (laughs) No. <laughs> I trust you. You know this movie like Cor- the back of your hand, so okay. I think you can... Coraline, Coraline Jones and her family move from Michigan to Oregon. They move into a building called the Pink Palace, but it's weird because the owner of the Pink Palace usually doesn't let kids live there. Huh? Why is that? Well, I guess we'll find out. Coraline meets YB and immediately starts bullying the shit out of him. He gives her a little doll that looks just like her and it's like, hey, found this. And she's like, what the fuck? But she takes it and just immediately starts like nurturing it like it's a fucking baby. She's like, I'm too old for dolls, but like this is now my favorite thing. <laughs> and it, it turns out that the eyes of the doll are a like a spy camera for this evil version of her mother to spy on her. And basically Coraline finds this little door and she goes through the little door and it's a parallel universe, but where in real life her parents are kind of negligent and don't really... I, they, I wouldn't say they don't care about her, but they just like, you know, her life isn't the most interesting ever. She goes through this little door into a portal and then the other world where everyone has buttons in their eyes and it's like, oh my God, everything is amazing and I get to eat cupcakes for dinner and life is great and everybody's so cool and interesting. Um, and then she just goes back and forth between those two worlds for a while and then it turns out that the, in order to stay in the other world, she has to sew buttons into her eyes. Turns out the other mother, evil, who would have guessed? Um, and then so she's like, I don't want to sew buttons into my eyes. But then the other mother kidnaps her real parents. And it turns out that she's been harvesting the souls of children. So Coraline's like, I'm going to challenge her to a game. And she's like, I have to find the souls of the children you've stolen and you'll let my parents go. And the other mother's like, fucking sure, like <laughs> a, as if I'm going to play fair. And so they play this game. She comes really close to winning. But then at the very end, the other mother also has like slowly been shape shifting into this weird spider thing <laughs> over the past, you know, hour of the movie. And um, she throws a cat at the other mother's face who scratches the eyes out and she climbs out of this big spider web and she saves the day. And that's the whole movie. That was actually the fastest recap that's ever been done on this podcast. I'm really impressed. Thank you. I was really trying to focus on not being like, and then YB goes hunting for slugs. And also there's a cat voiced by Keith David. and <laughs> um, <laughs> Miss Spink and Miss Forcible put on a show and there's the claymation titties. I, and- that's like one of the only notes that I have that sticks out in my brain was I said, this bitch's titties have me dead. <laughs> <laughs> do you know like the tiktok audio that's like this movie is rated pg p for porn <laughs> i'm just thinking of the one that's like i'll be honest with you i'm only looking at your titties right now <laughs> <laughs> this podcast is now us just applying as many tiktok audios to to whatever film as we can <laughs> 
<laughs> but in like the least, it's just you and I reciting them back and forth <laughs> to each other. <laughs> Um, I will say, like, watching this movie, I had, because I, I knew the general plot kind of thing, and I knew about, like, the buttons on the eyes, but, like, after that mm-hmm. scene where, like, the other mother propositions Coraline and says, so these buttons on your eyes, I had no idea where the movie went after that, and so that was a trip mm-hmm. and a half to watch, but I really liked it. Yeah, I definitely recall a lot of the ads for it. Maybe. I mean, it obviously has a very specific vibe and a vibe that kind of gives off, you know, potential creepiness. But I don't really think that the ads in 2009 really gave off that this movie was going to be fucking scary Mm -hmm. if you're a child. And I do think a lot of people our age who weren't necessarily into that kind of thing went and saw this movie and were, like, fucking traumatized. (laughs) No, I was talking to, like, I have a friend and I I mentioned that we were doing this um, this week. And they're like, oh, yeah, someone I know literally will not watch it. It's a horror, like, it's the scariest movie they've ever seen kind of thing. And I, I get that, and I'm kind of glad that I didn't watch it as a child because I think I would have fallen onto that spectrum of, like, this is a little too creepy for me. I don't want to watch it. I had, so, like, my closest friend in um, elementary school did, this movie came out right around their birthday. Oh, so we, like, all went, we all, like, went to go, because we, the two of us loved the book. Mm-hmm, okay. And it was, like, we were, like, hell yeah. We were, like, hell yeah. But, like, their mom had to, like, ask permission of all the other moms. Like, hey, we're going to go see this really, like, this really questionable. I think only, like, three of us. Everyone was like, yeah, my kid's not going to see Uh that. So it's, like, like a really small group of us who were, like, into creepy (laughs) shit went and saw Coraline for my best friend's birthday. (laughs) But it was like, yeah, like, fuck them kids. If you're going to be scared, you're not invited. (laughs) Fucking grow a pair, all right? We're 11 years old. We can take it. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> pussies but i do i like really distinctly remember um that this was exactly the time that 3d glasses stopped being red oh, and, and they blue were just black ones and started being those like sunglass mm-hmm. ones um and i think this like really might have been the first movie like that i went that had those sun like those glasses mm-hmm. And I think this was, like, yeah, definitely really the turn for 3D movies. As an adult, I don't really go no. see 3D movies. It's not, like, I don't know. Do you Now they have, like, I was just, like, for shits and giggles, I was looking at the theater near mm-hmm. me about the options for the, just for the newest Venom movie. Not that I was going to mm. go see it, but I knew that would be the one that had, like, all the, 3D. like, 4D. Oh. Do you know that 4D is a thing? Don't know you, you, like, it what, says, what make, what's the difference between 3D and 4D? The description? No, the description said that it was like a sensory... I think they like spray water on you. It's like a like a 3D sensory yeah. okay. sight smells uh, like... I don't, I don't even know. But so there were like 18 fucking different options. They were like 4K Ultra 3D XD F950 AK47... <laughs> 3D, like I'm, I'm like you I actually I, get I was shot starting to in, Google when you're watching. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I was like, but I was like starting to try to Google like the difference mm-hmm. between all these different 3D options, and I'm like, I give up. I don't. I I don't want to get water sprayed uh, yeah, on me. When you said 4D, immediately like I thought of like when you go to like if you've ever gone to like Universal or Disney or something like that, and they have those weird rides where it's like just an auditorium full of people and they just project like something. You know what I mean? So like yeah, they, they, I always remember at Disney there's um the Bugs yeah, Life one. one and they have the the feeling of bugs crawling under uh-huh. your seat. So like under your ass, they like make your seats all textured. And I remember I remember freaking the <laughs> fuck out. I was like, no, this is not for me. But in the Beauty and the Beast one, they make it smell like pie, and I was like, this is more my speed. <laughs> but like, yeah, like I guess they must have like just one theater that's like equipped to like do 4D stuff or something like that, which is so weird. <laughs> they, they just like rewired the sprinkler system. <laughs> They're like, yeah, if it rains in the movie, we'll just. <laughs> You, like, end your movie like you've just seen, like, Dune or something like that, and right across from you, everyone's <laughs> sopping wet coming out of seeing Venom. <laughs> coming out of seeing The Notebook, everybody's just drenched. <laughs> but, yeah, no. Um, Ugh, I would. I feel like this one was would have, if they had 4D when Coraline came out, that would have been just a wild ride. I feel like for, like, the mouse, the first thing that comes to mind is, like, the mouse circus. I loved the mouse circus. I don't know what you would do. F- oh, see, that's, I, I totally agree with you that it's the all the little side mm-hmm. quests that are the best part of this movie. Like, when she, like, Mrs. Fink and Forcibles, um, like, little 
Mm -hmm. show with all the dogs in the audience yes and then the mouse circus like yes and i love all the scenes with the food when Mm -hmm. her and the other mother and father are like having dinner together like those three those three aspects of like the other world Mm -hmm. are definitely like what get me about this movie because that's when i think i realized like holy shit every single one of those little mice somebody made Mm -hmm. out of clay that's fucking there are hundreds of them it was um it was two years of Mm pre-production that makes sense and then i think another two years of like shooting so um it took i think it's crazy when they talk about timeline they had they had like over a hundred thousand faces like for people um because this one really is um for a lot of claymation if you look at their mouths Mm -hmm. it's not perfect Mm -hmm. it's kind of like like a like an older cartoon you know like it but they they really made it so et- their mouths are moving like a fucking person. Yeah, like especially too. Like I feel like they like they didn't have to because I don't think anyone in this has like really like has like lips. Like you know what I mean? Like in a way that like it's st- it sticks yeah. out of their face kind of thing. It's very much yeah. It's just a mouth. But like, so like I feel mm-hmm. like you give you get more like leeway with something like that instead of like having something de- super detailed but they still like really committed to it which is just so impressive i think that's the thing that they use 3d printing mm. for was like every different like iteration of like lower jaw yeah. movement to like really make like the words no make that makes sense. sense do you know that Coraline is vo- voiced by dakota, um, dakota fanning yeah fanning? I, saw, I saw her yeah. name come up on the credit and i said of course it was dakota fanning she ruled like the preteen era of movies in like 2009 like no one else oh for sure and i it was so originally for a hot second it was gonna be live action mm. and they cast her to play Coraline, mm-hmm. and then they they were like no we're doing claymation and they were like but do you still want to be on it and she was like i guess so but then they showed her like what Coraline was gonna look like and she's like oh i'm fucking yeah. pumped now like uh-huh. yes um so she but this movie uses a lot of like voice actors there's not a ton of huge Mm -hmm. names attached to it as far as like who the voicings are i know you and i were talking about keith david for a little bit he does Mm -hmm. the cat and he's like icon icon voice actor keith david he does a lot of like documentary voiceovers but he also is in like every show (laughs) ever like rick and morty family guy like basically every every cartoon that needs a voice keith keith david has been in it he also he does a lot of video games too i think he's like in halo and like mass effect mm-hmm. i don't know but he does everything he's he's mm-hmm. amazing and i guess that is part of the conversation of like do you get voice actors to do voice roles or do you get big names to do voice roles to make your movie more like commercial yeah no appealing? i really liked this one because it didn't like dakota fanning was the only name i knew on the bill really um mm-hmm. and like keith david like he's one of those voice actors that like i was sitting there and watching this i was like who is that i know i know that guy i know i know this man's voice um And so I like how they did that. Like, get a big name voice actor to do it, or something Mm -hmm. like that. But like, if I heard, if I heard like Meryl Streep uh, in this um, movie, I'd be so (laughs) taken out of it. Well, speaking of Meryl Streep, not really, but the um the voice of Miss Forcible (laughs) is she voiced the fairy godmother in Shrek Two. Oh my god. And obviously she's doing like really like a hoo. I'm an old lady, like in this one and in Shrek Two, it's more. But I, I, I. it's not like I clocked it, but I was looking to see what these people have uh-huh. done other than this movie. And I was like, holy shit, the fairy godmother for Shrek 2. Icon. Icon <laughs> legend. I don't know a better woman. <laughs> I don't know a better version of I'm holding on for a hero. Never. Are you kidding me? It hasn't me? been done. Um, I also think this is one of the best soundtracks. Yeah. Well, for a movie. I'm I, like, obviously every aspect of this movie, I just like uh-huh. gush over. But I, I'm a, I love, I love uh-huh. the soundtrack of this movie. It's so like uniquely creepy in a way that it's like children. It's like a French children's yeah. choir singing. It gives me the same. And it's it, uh. gives me the same vibe as like um, an American Horror Story Asylum, where they use like the singing nun as their whole thing. Yeah. But um, yeah. No, yeah, I right. just circling back to like our whole thing about TikTok sounds. I had only ever heard this like people use like the sound now over like TikToks and stuff like that. Um so I but like immediately when it started playing I was like, "Wait, I know this." Yeah. It's pretty iconic and I love the way that they do like returning mm-hmm. themes. Like the other mother's always like humming while mm-hmm. she's cooking or something mm-hmm. like that, you know, like they have the, you know, the most memorable bits of the songs kind of reappear in other mm-hmm. places. 
on the movie. Um, but for music, so originally this was going to be like almost a full out musical. I can kind of see that. They were originally going to go like. They were going to go, like, not really as mm. scary and more of just, like, a quirky musical. So that part where the other father yeah. is playing the piano and sings the song to her, that was going to be the vibe for, like, well, the I whole thing. Well, I was wondering. Thing. But then they scrapped everything. But they were like, we can't scrap all the songs because um, the, the band, They Might Be Giants, if you're familiar with them. They make a lot of, like, really quirky movies. So they did the whole, all the songs and they were like, oh, we feel so bad scrapping everything. Cause like what they did is really good, but that's just like not the mm-hmm. direction we're going in anymore. So they kept the other father song yeah. because they were like, we got to have something. So that's, that's, they might be giants who did. Yeah, that no. Song. Well, I was wondering too, cause I, was, I, once he started playing like that little song or whatever, I was like, is this going to be a musical? I was kind of relieved that it wasn't, <laughs> um, but I could so see this being like, someone making this like into a broadway show or something like that if it hasn't already been attempted yeah i'm i've never looked into that i don't think so but um all right we are back at it again with another chocolate or vanilla a game we play halfway through the podcast hosted by my lovely generous amazing and talented mother jen who comes up with the questions it's a game of her own invention she deserves a nobel peace prize for it (laughs) Uh, this game has bridged many a social gap through the art of arguing your own opinion about things. Um, the game is called <laughs> Chocolate or Vanilla. Jen gives us two options, and we all just say the one we like more. I usually get a little too into it because my opinion has to be right. So, um, is there a theme this week? There is. But thank you for that intro. Oh, my God. Oh, of course. <laughs> um, so the theme is uh, movies that are just a single word that is a girl's name. Oh, my God. Okay. Amazing. Yeah. Okay. Like Coraline. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, chocolate or vanilla? Chocolate. Vanilla. Chocolate. Um, Carrie or Sybil? Carrie. I've never seen Sybil. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Carrie. Sybil was like Sally Field with multiple personalities. Um, back in the day. I love Sally Field. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was like, like very, uh, racy for that day or whatever. Um, Interesting. Uh, I would say Carrie too, though. And, oh, so original Carrie or, um, second Carrie? What was Hold it? Chloe Grace Moretz? Yes. Was, yeah. I think that was the first R, that was the first R-rated movie I ever saw in the theaters. Yes. Was the... It was the Carrie remake, but mm-hmm. I'm going to say the original. The remake's never really as good as the original. Who played the mom in that, though? Wasn't it, like, um, not Nicole Kid? Was it, like, Julianne Moore or something like that? It might have been. Probably. Yeah. I'm going to go with the original, too, though. I would take the original, too. Um, Harriet or Judy? Oh, okay, Harriet. This is, again, Jen, this is the second time where you've posed Harriet Tubman. <laughs> like, Ju- like Judy Garland's great, but you just simply cannot. What was it last time you were, like, Harriet Tubman or, like, Chad Betsy Michael Ross Murray? But, oh, yeah, it was Betsy Ross. Yeah, it's it's just got to be Harriet Tubman. Uh-huh. Like, it's you really got to pose a very important figure for me to even consider not picking Harriet Tubman. Yeah. Especially the movie too. I also was, would say out of those t- out of those two movies, even just like based on which movie I enjoyed more, definitely like tenfold I would choose Harriet. Yeah, wasn't Judy. it like Cynthia Erivo who? Uh, yeah, yes, oh, amazing, she was so good, she was yeah, so good. stunning. Yeah, for sure, Harriet. Yeah, me too. And I didn't see Judy. I didn't see me neither. Yeah. It was okay. Um, Moana or Mulan? Ah, oh, love Moana, but Mulan's the OG. Got to give it to my girl. Yeah, but uh, Mulan's probably like my favorite like Disney, I guess, princess movie. Yeah. So of course, Mulan so. is the blueprint for every feminist text post nineteen ninety whatever. Mulan is the blueprint. Yeah, current day feminism wouldn't exist without Mulan. <laughs> <laughs> I will, uh, yeah, Mulan for the sweep. Uh, Annie or Cinderella? I mean. I guess it's hard because, I mean, I, there have been a couple iterations of Annie, I guess. I was going to say Cinderella has has existed across so many different, like, mediums that I think it's kind of hard to compare the two. And Annie is a singing child, <laughs> which there are few things worse in this world <laughs> than, than A, children, and B, children who sing. Um, so I guess I'll go with Cinderella because at least she's not eight. <laughs> Yeah, Cinderella's given us uh, beautiful things like uh, a Cinderella story and all that. Um, true, true and that. also, I've just I've 
genuinely never seen or listened to Annie, and I have exactly zero interest in doing so. So I'm gonna stick with Cinderella. I was, I'll say Cinderella too. Just a lot I do like. Hands. There's like one Jay Z song that uses like it samples a hard knock yeah. life from from Annie, oh, that's and tight. I do like. I like that Jay Z song, but I wouldn't. <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm an Annie stan. Uh-huh. I was watching Glee the other day, and Sue Sylvester saying uh, the trouble with little girls from Annie. Mm. <laughs> It's always good when Sue sings. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Maleficent or Carol? Oh. It's hard because. Um, Carol. <laughs> it's simply, yeah, Carol. You're choosing two, like, like slightly intimidating maternal figures here for this one. Um, but yeah, I guess I'll pick Carol. I gotta respect Angelina Jolie's cheekbones in that movie, though. That does that does something to me, but... I like that you went with maternal figures, because I was sitting there, I was like, I'd jump into the sack with both of them. <laughs> well, yeah, that's... I was going for more, like, like mommy issues, uh-huh, yeah. but... <laughs> yeah, no... Two sides of the same coin, I guess. <laughs> yeah, no. Uh, as much as we've shit-talked Carol in the past, um... I think we were very quickly humbled when we watched the movie. Um, just something about Kate Blanchett that I can't say no to. So definitely going to stick with Carol. Yeah, I'll go, I'll go Carol too. Um, Frida or Juno? Mm. Oh, this is so hard. Um, those are two really great movies. I got to go with Juno though. That's one of my all-time faves. Just just everything about that movie like ticks all my boxes. Uh, I gotta I gotta go on the opposite end of things. And I gotta say Frida. I was, remember watching it for the first time and just being so taken with Selma Hayek's performance. So out, just outstanding and fabulous. Um, and also, also I- character actor Alfred Molina yeah. <laughs> as her shitty husband. Uh-huh. Yeah, and also Frida Kahlo was just such a badass. So what about you, Jen? Um, I will go with Juno. I love Juno. Um, Matilda or Roxanne? What even is Roxanne? Matilda. Oh, uh, Roxanne was like a retelling of like Cyrano de Bergerac and like Steve Martin played like a police chief and he was trying to win over Daryl Hannah, but he was using the other guy, the other guy from Top Gun there as, and like he would like whisper right. in well, his ear I, kind of thing. Yeah. I don't know the first thing about all of that. Um... But I do know that Danny DeVito's directorial debut, <laughs> Matilda, is one of the greatest films ever made. So I will have to be going with Matilda on this one. Yeah, I'm going to side with Dara. Matilda's just, like, it's different. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Matilda, yeah, all day. Um, Yentl or Tootsie? I've, okay, the other day I said something about Yentl and Henry thought I was, like, making a joke. And I was like, that's a real movie starring Barbara Streisand. And he was like, you just made that up just now. And I was like, no, I didn't. I promise. <laughs> uh, but what was my other choice? Tootsie. Um, I guess I'll go with Yentl, because apparently it's a figment of my imagination. <laughs> so I... Also bar- Barb. Barb for life. I don't know a damn thing about either of these movies. I don't think I've even heard of either of them. Really? Um, nope. Um... Who okay? So, so I know one. I know one thing about Yentl is Barbara Streisand's in it. Who is the main actress in Tootsie? Uh, Tootsie. Dustin Hoffman plays like okay. he dresses up like a girl to get like um, a part. Maybe he's an actor or something to get a part in a TV show, but um, he has to dress like a girl. So. Is it like he, for the TV show he has to dress like a girl, or he's dressing like a girl so he has an opportunity? Exactly. He's dressing uh, like a girl. So he's like, um, you know, he's pretending to be a girl and without yeah, telling anybody. Yeah. yeah. Well, I don't. How tasteful. How tastefully is it? And done? Jessica. Oh, it's so campy and stupid. Well, Jessica I don't like Lang her. plays a love interest. I like her, but I don't like the fact that Dustin Hoffman is taking away opportunities from women. Right. <laughs> so I will be going with Gentle. <laughs> because Barbara would never. No. <laughs> I, I, uh, I'll go Gentle also. Um, Okay, the movie Emma, but the 1996 version with Gwyneth mm. or the 2020 version with Anya Taylor-Joy? Gwen, Gwyneth Paltrow, like, fascinates me in a way <laughs> that I just can't describe, but I don't think she's a good actress ever. Like, her entity as as a businesswoman and as, like, just a 
spiritual figure of bullshit. <laughs> even as, like, like, absolutely. Even as Holly Holiday in Glee. I will say she was kind of, that was, I feel like that's where her threshold is. You know what I mean? That was just her, like, being herself. She's just, like, a skinny white woman who can, like, I don't know, has nice cheekbones. And she, in the 90s, yeah. so it just, like, happened yeah. to work out for her. But was my second choice was the um, the new one with yeah. Anya Taylor-Joy. Yeah, I definitely have to go with that one. Although she's also a skinny white woman with amazing cheekbones, I think she can dish out a role mm-hmm. like like Gwenny never could. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, that's for sure. I, th- I think we should let Gwen um, stick to selling her vagina-scented candles <laughs> and then just leave her alone. Um, but goop, goop, goop is such a mystery to me. <laughs> I think it's one of the greatest marketing feats of all time. Honestly, <laughs> I'd love to do a deep dive. I, I want to watch that show they have. I like just need to like get really into it. Um, but I'm gonna also have to say Emma from 2020 because, yeah, I'm also um, a little Anya Taylor Joy stan, um, and the cast is so good. Like, um, who else is Josh in it? O- Josh O'Connor, uh-huh. who um, has the, been playing um, the Crown. Uh, yeah, the he's crown. been in the Crown. Um. Oh, um, that girl that plays Lily in Sex Education, she's in it. Oh, love her. Yeah, she's great. Um, there's this one other girl that's um, a little, like, um, well-known, but I can't think of her name, but she plays, like, the side character. Also, there's um, the guy that plays Adam from Sex Education is also in this, which I think is really funny. Yeah, He's there's like, this, this crazy tiny so little if- role. <laughs> Yes. No, but okay. If you look up, oh, so if anybody has say. seen the new the twenty twenty Emma mm-hmm. role in the, I think it was the Gwyneth Paltrow one. Mm-hmm. The the actor who plays his dad on Sex Education played the same role as him in the yep n- the uh-huh. one in the nineties. Oh, 90s, that's so cool. And then the, plays his son on Sex Education had the role, and they look unclockably like father son. Like so, it's wild that they both got cast as the same role in the same movie like a decade decades apart uh-huh. i don't know it's wild so anybody who's a sex education fan just like look up you know pr- adam groff and dad yeah no best uh emma situation it's it's really best funny. father son casting i've seen i think ever honestly what about you jen that whole show that whole show is the best casting True. ever i'll just say is it. that on netflix yeah. It is. I highly recommend. Like, very sexual scenarios, but in a way that's, like, kind of lighthearted and funny and I don't yeah. know. Yeah. I couldn't recommend it enough to everybody. Everybody out there. If you haven't watched Sex Education, season three just dropped. Really great mm-hmm. stuff. Um, I'll go with the new one, too. And, Darren, I'm pretty sure nobody calls her Gwenny. <laughs> Gwenny, I do. I do because she doesn't she is trying to put herself on this like statuesque pedestal and I'm like the only way I can tear her down is by calling her the most embarrassing thing, which is Gwenny. Yeah. Um, all right, um Hannah or Peppermint? Again, I really don't think I know yeah. who's so Hannah. So Hannah was Sorsha Ronan, I think, and like she was like um this girl brought up in the in the snow in Russia to be like a dead a stone cold killer. And what? Eric Eric Banya played her father. And then who's oh, Peppermint from no, Drag Race? I knew you were gonna say that. Peppermint is um Jennifer Garner is like a mom done wrong who goes all vigilante or whatever. Okay, well if it's Russian spy or Jennifer Garner vigilante, I'm gonna go with Sir Sharon and playing a young Russian spy lady. So I guess I'll go with Hannah. Yeah. Hannah's not a Russian name. Yeah. Wait, it should be called. Are you like... Googling it right now, Emily? Yeah, that's yeah, exactly what yeah. I'm doing. Yeah, Joe Wright, um, who did Pride and Prejudice and Atonement, um, and Anna Karenina um, directed this one. So, and I love all of those movies. So, and Saoirse Ronan. So, I'm gonna have to say um, Hannah. Yeah, def- definitely. I'll Hannah. have to add that to my watch list. Yeah, is, right? it, is it any good? I remember thinking it was good at the time, but yes, yes, it's good. Anything with Saoirse Ronan is, is gonna be good. Yeah. Um. All right, uh, Anastasia. Sarah, what's or- that look? <laughs> I was trying to. I was going through my head really quick. I was like, okay, Lovely Bones, okay, mm-hmm. uh, Lady Bird, okay. Like I just did a little rolodex yeah, yeah, in my yeah. head, and I because I, I I love to argue. I wanted to dispute uh-huh. you, but I I can't. I I cannot. Yeah. Um. Oh, Anastasia or Cleopatra? 
Anastasia. Anastasia. I was thinking about that movie recently and how I need to give it like a rewatch because I think it's been probably a good 10 years since I've really watched Anastasia, but that was one of my favorites growing up for sure. Um, Dimitri is all I have to say. D- Dimitri from Anastasia yeah. can get it any day of the week. And that weird bat that's in that movie. Yes. I like him a lot too. So I, I got to go with Anastasia. What a what a great film. I'd have never seen what Cleopatra is just about. Yeah, just Cleopatra. like the original. Like, I think Elizabeth Taylor played Cleopatra in like 1960. Yeah, a white woman. Yeah. Well, a with white her woman? eye makeup. No. Lots of eye makeup. Yeah, with black face on. No thank you. Do you know Elizabeth Taylor has double eyelashes? That can't That's be true. real. It's true. And she has Fun purple fact. eyes. Like, yeah. But mm. bullshit. Um, I heard so, from a fake very news. reliable source. <laughs> She's yeah, like, I'm not allowed yeah. to disclose it, but it's very reliable. I did sign an NDA, <laughs> but all I have to say is that she does have two sets of eyelashes. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I actually never saw Anastasia as a child or anything like that. And I also haven't seen Cleopatra. Um, but I do like the conspiracy theory that Cleopatra um, created the first vibrator. Just full of bees. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she, she put, like, a bees in a maraca. Is, yeah, she was cited as, like, putting live bees in a maraca, and she's like, whatever gets the job done. Um, so just for that fun, um, probably inaccurate history, history fact, I'm going to have to say Cleopatra. <laughs> okay, and for that reason, I'm going to say Anastasia. <laughs> <laughs> Very fair. Oh. Um, and last one. Babe or Okja? Oh my god. Are these so you're you're implying that these are two names for women? Girl names. Girl names. <laughs> <laughs> um okay, although although I have nothing but love and respect for Babe, Big Pig in the City, I, I think o- Okja is fully one of my favorite movies of all time. In the same way I've been talking so endearingly about Coraline this episode, I really feel very similarly about Okja as far as like I don't really have a ton of nostalgia for that movie because it came out like two years ago. So I feel like it's actually more valid because it's like 11 year old me really like Coraline. It's like, okay, well, I'll take it or leave it. But like Okja, 22 year old me fully endorses that. Anyone who hasn't seen Okja, it's a Netflix original. Go watch it. Jake Gyllenhaal, Tilda Swinton, really a uh, big giant uh, CGI pig hippo thing. It's Is really it Jake Gyllenhaal stuff. or Paul so, Dino? Both. Oh, both. Oh, wow. Yeah, Stephen Ewan's in it, isn't it? Isn't he? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is that the all of my husbands? <laughs> Stephen Ewan. Yeah. Yep. Yes, all of my husbands. All of my husbands are in Okja, <laughs> including Okja, <laughs> including Tilda Swinton. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> oh, Tilda in that movie. If this isn't argument enough, Tilda Swinton plays a twin of uh-huh. herself. It's nice. on my my coveted movie playlist of movies where someone plays a twin of herself. There's only like four of them, but. <laughs> It's inherently always a good time. <laughs> yeah, Okja was really good when I um, watched it. Um, when you and I watched it and then I passed out <laughs> drunk as hell on FaceTime over peak quarantine. Yeah, it was like maybe 20 like, minutes. Emily, we that. have to watch my favorite movie and I was asleep three minutes in. <laughs> yeah. It, <laughs> I, it was so funny too because I was like, I don't know if I should end the FaceTime call or not. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I I really enjoyed it though. I'm glad uh, you showed it to me. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Okja. I will. Uh, I'll pick Babe Pig in the City because I haven't seen Okja. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's a good time. I it's, knew you loved it though. It's yeah, yeah it's good stuff. <laughs> I I I respect Babe though. Much like Wilbur from Charlotte's Web, we needed a lot of pig protagonists in the, <laughs> in the early 2000s. <laughs> Straight to VHS tape type yeah. beat, you know? We love a straight to VHS pig movie. <laughs> That's so funny. Um, yeah. Hey, I was going to ask you, did Henry like Coraline? Yeah, Henry's seen Coraline. I, every person in my life I have made watch this yeah. movie the minute oh, I meet them. Um, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah. I meet somebody new and I'm like, oh, you haven't seen Coraline? So that's the first thing we're doing once we hang out. <laughs> nice. But Henry, Henry likes nice. Coraline. He, he, can, he can get behind <laughs> it. He just gave the... Thumbs okay, up. finger motion. Cool. All right. Well, that was it. 
Awesome. Um, thank you so much for being on the pod. And I want to preface, so we actually are recording this right now, post-recording the entire Coraline episode. And so later when I give my movie suggestions, it's going to really seem like I just bagged off of Jen's idea here, but I promise I didn't <laughs> that this is actually happening like a full 10 hours later. So I'm going to seem really not creative in like roughly 26 minutes from now. And I just promise you that it, I felt really creative and original in that moment to me. Well, so. it, the same thing happened when we did, um, when we separately did um, Beetlejuice, everything mm. we talked about, you guys had talked about before. And I was like, oh my gosh, it's like, it's like we have yeah. the, yeah, we just were on the same vibe or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but thank you so much, Jenna. Always, always a pleasure for hosting thank this. You. Um, yeah, little game. We try to put them up on our Instagram. Sometimes we forget, but sometimes we uh, successfully do it. So keep your eyes peeled. Sometime soon up on our Instagram, we'll post all these questions for you to pick who your favorite lady name movie is. <laughs> Um, we love to hear your responses. I'm not so sure about uh, Babe versus Okja. I think those are more gender neutral, large uh, CGI animal names. But they can also be for it can be for the girls, you know. Um, Remind me of your gender again. Um, this is for girls only. <laughs> Um, but goodbye and m- moving right. on. I'll see you guys later. I love you. Thanks. Bye, Jen. Love you. Bye. I think this movie is not nearly as popular as I perceive it to be in my head because it was like my mm. favorite and then I also force everyone around me to watch it. So it's like I don't actually know if everyone has seen it because I just have made them or if like a lot of people actually I mean I know there's it's like a pretty niche I mm. don't know thing like when I look online it's a lot of like a lot of really cool um, Coraline cosplays and like people who are really into like fan art and stuff like that so it's definitely like a certain type of person who like really likes this movie i think and hopefully it's the type of person who listens to this podcast i hope mm-hmm. you guys have seen Coraline. oh no i think they do don't, don't don't you fret i look through all of your instagram profiles when you vote <laughs> yeah I know yeah you've right, seen Coraline. Um, no yeah not only not only do we like every per every person who dms us i do like i like do a quick uh-huh. scroll Cause I'm like I gotta catch a vibe, and it's always like I'm always like yes, we exactly. can be friends. Like <laughs> I'm down. But also, a couple of people have su- have suggested oh, yeah. this to us, so I know it's not at least at least three of you out there are interested in hearing our <laughs> and thoughts that's on enough Coraline, validation so. for us hey. to do it. <laughs> <laughs> so hey, besties. <laughs> um, I will say, like watching this around Halloween definitely makes puts that thought in your head. Like this would be a great Halloween costume, and so many people have definitely done it. But oh, for sure, it's also pretty. Like it's a mm-hmm. you can do a raincoat and blue hair. Yeah, done. exactly. Your Coraline, right? Low like raincoat, blue hair. But then if you want to like really mm-hmm. get into it, like there, she has so many cool outfits. Like at one point, she wears kind of like a, a I like love a the sailor hat. hat, sort of, and like you can you can incorporate uh-huh. that or the um the star the sweater with the stars mm-hmm. on it is like pretty iconic. So she's got a lot of cool looks, and I know um like if you want to do it with a friend, why yeah. be too? You just get like a big a big jacket and like kind of have bad yeah. posture. I I will <laughs> say I really liked his mask that he has for like searching for slugs. Oh. Yes, like it was like um like a welding uh-huh. mask, but like when he cranked it, was like nautical it, it, like, almost. Turned. You know what I mean, like a um submarine yes. lookout. But uh, it was really neat. So like it's kind of interesting as far as how the movie differs from the book is why not in the book. Okay. Why yeah, so YB's not a character in the book at all, but like Coraline talks to herself a lot, or like has a lot of like inner. Now like, I feel seen by this movie to the point. Where- <laughs> Yeah, right. So they were like, we can't have her just like literally talking to herself the whole time. So they put in YB to sort of have like yeah. just a sounding board. She for can't her to constantly be monologuing. Of, which, yeah, yeah. <laughs> which like she yeah, kind of right. does for for. Yeah, she's some like of searching it. through the house, um, like looking at all the stuff or whatever, and she's writing down everything, just chatting to herself. A, what? Yeah. One boring blue. One thing boy. about that um, scene, though. That I was just <laughs> appalled by. She raw dogs it and smacks all the slugs with her <laughs> hand. I was like, this is... <laughs> with her poison oak. She's got fucking poison oak on her hand. And she just starts smacking the shower wall to kill the bugs. And then there's like this goo I was like, this on is, her hand. This is how I know Coraline and I would not have been friends if I was in this movie. <laughs> 
No, she would have bullied me, and I still would have wanted to be her friend. That's like... <laughs> I would have been like, wow, she's so cool. She has blue hair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just like YB is not in the book, and there's actually a lot of things about the movie that aren't necessarily true to the book. Definitely vibe mm. captures the vibe perfect. And as far as the overall story, like yes, very true to it. But the book is a lot more about like Coraline using her like wits to figure out like mm-hmm. the mystery at hand more. Like she knows something is up with the other world the mm-hmm. minute it happens in the book. Whereas the movie, she's kind of yeah. like taken by it. But I think that has a lot more to do. Like, it's so visually stunning. How could she not be? You know, but um, like a lot of the side stories and stuff, too, are like way more emphasized in the movie. I just think because they're like, you know, visually mm-hmm. intriguing and fun. Um, yeah. But yeah, the the book is a lot more about her really figuring it yeah, out. Yeah, which I'm sure made it a lot more like endearing to you, like as an 11 year old kind of thing. You're like, oh, look at this bad Cause she's exactly. really smart, yeah. She's really smart and cunning and witty, and like she, you know, is getting shit done. But also, I definitely mm-hmm. love the movie too, cause I so was like, she's kind of quirky, and you see in a lot of movies that are like quote unquote mm-hmm. four girls, or at least just have a female as mm-hmm. the protagonist. It's like you never really see like a like a weird, yeah, weirder girl. I don't know. Like she's in the mud and she's wearing interesting yeah. clothes i don't know no. that's not necessarily always the case so if you if that was like you you're like oh my exactly. god i feel so seen exactly. oh, especially girl. like like now i think you'd see stuff more like that but definitely like less so in like 2009 when we were watching mm-hmm. it and stuff like that um the first thing that really comes to mind is um uh bridge yeah. to terabithia her like character Isn't how that she was another also dakota kind of fanning like movie gonna, yeah <laughs> Yeah, right. No, that's Anna Sophia Robb, but they look exactly <laughs> the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, but like but like she wears she wears like kind of tomboyish clothes and she's like in the mm-hmm. woods and I that was also one that I like felt very seen. That's by another one as I haven't seen. Yeah. Oh wow, it's really yeah, sad. I, also good mm-hmm. great book. Great book. Um mm-hmm. for kids. I wanna ask, do you have okay, is it specifically Coraline that you um really feel like connected to or are there other side characters that you'd say are your favorites oh my god mr bobinski <laughs> that's who i yeah i love mr bobinski i love him and his jumping mouse circus i love that he is ordering cheese <laughs> off the internet i love that he's like doing pilates and parkour uh-huh. around this house um i i love him i love miss pink enforceable too obviously like they're oh lesbians. yeah they're it's like your aunt your aunt and her roommate at thanksgiving like yeah <laughs> And they're and all their dogs. And I especially just love the um the like interpretation of these like whack ass older people. And then how, what is the most interesting way we could make them to an eleven year old? And it's like, yeah, he has a jumping mm-hmm. mouse circus and you get to eat flying cotton candy. Or like, yeah, all the little Scotty dogs are in I the theater that. seats and they're gonna jump from the ceiling. Like I I yeah, uh-huh. I definitely love all those side characters. I also love the dad. Yeah. Both as both as the other dad, where he like uh-huh. is a pumpkin, and like the real dad is so I I feel bad because it's like I, I don't think this is a child neglect no. situation. I think they're just fucking exactly. working. They love their child, and that's why they're working so much, kind of thing. But like, I don't know. I I think the relationship between Coraline and her mom versus her and her dad. Like, I like how they mm-hmm. really differentiated. Like, the, it wasn't just like the parents were a unit that she was against it was like she has a very unique relationship yeah. with both of them which i'm sure every person has like a different relationship yeah. with both well of their it definitely parents. Uh, but i like the dad a lot because he's kind of like that gangly cor- yeah. like you know that uh-huh. guy yeah no i like that you brought up the different relationships between um Coraline and her parents because and we we mentioned this before how like Coraline is very much that ladybird character and definitely their relationships with their parents also sort of uh mirror that yeah mm-hmm. oh for sure but, um side character wise yeah no i <laughs> i was sitting there i was like mr bobinski i love it he's always on his bullshit just <laughs> leave me alone we do whatever the fuck <laughs> i want um especially him in like the other world too um i felt you said i think you as an 11 year old felt seen um as by Coraline. i felt seen by mr bobinski because mm-hmm. i too am just dozens of rats <laughs> in one human suit <laughs> eating the fuck out of some cheese (laughs) they're a marching Uh band 
And then they and then they uh, c- crawl into my trench coat, and then we eat hella cheese. Yeah. <laughs> I see. I feel really seen by Miss Forcible because titties be out, you know. <laughs> two two little nipple pasties, and they're just out. She was she was so ahead of her see. time with that. <laughs> yeah. Like the glittery, pa- glittery, this was, uh, glittery. Jesus Christ! Yeah, she um was ready uh-huh, for Coachella. Yeah, no, I think th- she was on the the EDM festival scene in 2000. Like I know I said Coraline was like great costume. I say you be her. Oh my god, if you could be Miss Pink and Miss Forcible as like an one of you dressed up like kind of like a mermaid and the other do like nipple pasties. It would be so niche though. Oh, yeah. Like like so like you would have to like only yeah. the 1% mm-hmm. will will get it. But. You have to gather all of the friends you know that were into Coraline as a child and have a party just with them but it's not a Coraline theme party it's just so that they can get the idea (laughs) yeah um I also think the other mother would be a great costume especially as she's Mm -hmm. in sort of that transitional stage where she's got like that really bony chest plate and like like she's not quite full Mm -hmm. spider but she's not like a person anymore she's sort of got those like really harsh features and the the shoulder pads on her dress have kind of extended Mm -hmm. i think that could be yeah that one feels like for one one of those people that are like really into making costumes like you don't do it all the time but you've like Mm. gone to comic con and like made like an entire outfit for it before you know what i mean (laughs) Well, also doing the most shapeshifted version of her, too, if you could get, like, some fucking yeah. spider legs and, like, really make your skin mm-hmm. all, like, crackled. Yeah, no, that, that for me, came out of nowhere. I didn't have any idea, like, like now thinking back to it, like, there's, like, all those little details where she starts, like, um, to sort of transform and, like, the back of her dress starts to look, like, more pointy and things like that. And that's one thing I really liked about this movie mm-hmm. is that I feel like I could watch it, like, back to back like one, like right at immediately after i watched it and pick up on so many things and i could do that like five times yeah especially if you just like choose to look in the mm-hmm. background too like just out of admiration of like like yeah like literally everything is handmade like just stare at the trees and be like oh my god like mm-hmm. somebody fucking sculpted those trees you know what i mean yeah. it's a very yeah that's why i think i watch it so many times a year because it's it is one of those i can kind of just have it on yeah. and like do something but then you can just, like, stare at it and be yeah. like, holy shit. I was really impressed with how they did the spider web scene kind of thing. Because that looked very much yeah. digital to me. And it wasn't. It literally yeah, wasn't. Yeah. I don't and know how they did like, it. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> Coraline could climb like it was no one's business, though. Oh, my God. Can we talk about literal like, Olympic she- athlete <laughs> Coraline she- Jones? Because she-, she said she's bored this entire movie. But I know that she's hitting the rock gym, like, every weekend. <laughs> I'm like, Coraline, you're so bored. Go outside and, like, work on your crimps. Strengthen your grip, bitch. She's, no, she's, like, doing, like, marine <laughs> training. She's, like, doing one-armed fucking pull-ups. Because at one scene, she fucking body slams YB. She, YB is fully, like, a boy her age who's, like, a little bit bigger than her. And she, like, lifts him up <laughs> over her head and slams him to the ground. I'm like, WWE up-and-comer Coraline Jones. And she also, mm-hmm. she throws her hat at the, um, the dragonflies right. who are carrying uh-huh. her little key away. Yeah. First try. First try, just fu- for, from she 50 on- feet away. <laughs> like, she's out yeah, disc she's, golf. She's on the she's ultimate frisbee team. <laughs> ultimate frisbee. <laughs> I just know she does CrossFit. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, every time it's like a display of physical prowess, she just like yeah. ten out of ten. Yeah, I'm like uh, junior yeah. Olympian. <laughs> I feel like that's one like every bitch that was a Coraline bitch. You are not that bitch. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> not zero <laughs> athleticism. You would go home and you would like knit the actual size of like that tiny little sweater like with your own human hair, but you weren't going outside and playing basketball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's oh the one God. place where Car- Coraline uh, really splits off from everything else yeah yeah couldn't relate couldn't be me <laughs> uh. but 
Um, <laughs> but also, I think it should be required by law that you watch this movie with a black. Well, cat you've got two. Lap because I, for the yeah, for the first time in my life, I I watched this movie with like an actual black cat in uh-huh. my presence. Uh, multiplies the experience. Yeah, I was gonna by say to- a million. Now, when I just look at my my boy cat, I'm like. <laughs> Keith David is, I just like, his meow, I'm like, oh, hey, Keith, like. <laughs> you just have to start talking to him. <laughs> like, you know he's talking. Yeah, right, I'm yeah. like waiting for him to you talk You know he's back. talking yeah. back, and you're like, okay, no, I got you. I get the idea. <laughs> we'll chat later. Speaking of my cats, if you can hear them in the background right now, they're <laughs> going at it. We gave them, we gave them a, um, like, a, just a brown paper That's all bag, they need. And they've just been, they've been loving it. <laughs> One of them will crawl in, and then the other one will hold with its paws the opening shut. It's like a escape room. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I love oh that. Oh my god. Escape room for cats. Oh. But, um, if I, if I'm, like, really glad that in America you have to be 18 to get a tattoo, because... I would have mm-hmm. some bad tattoos if sixth grade me had access to a tattoo gun. And for a really long time, for a really long time, I was going to get, like, a button. Which no. wouldn't be the worst thing in the world, but, like, but like I fully would have a button for Coraline on my body if, if 11-year-old me yeah, was allowed Yeah, that's not so bad. And it's a little more subtle than, like, I think a lot of 11-year-olds would have gone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, right. But I also, I always loved the, um... The, like, typeface, I guess, for the movie yeah. with the L is uh-huh. the black cat with its tail up and then the O is the button. I always thought that that was, like, the fucking coolest. Like, I, I would have got that, mm. like, on my body. <laughs> like, tramp stamp. Coraline tramp stamp. <laughs> yep. The black cat is, like, reaching into my ass crack. Like, no. <laughs> yeah, thank God tramp stamps have gone out of style. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, find yourself a bitch who has a claymation themed tramp stamp. <laughs> oh, oh my god. god. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Yeah, that'd be tough to come back from. <laughs> You're walking into like the, the tattoo removal center. They've never seen something like that before. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, can we get a photo of this for our Instagram just to like yeah. show people how bad it is? Those really people can like get. online that'll like um, actually like put out the whole video of you getting it lasered away. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, look at how great of a job we've done with this but terrible like, no, tattoo. <laughs> right. N- no hate to anybody who has a Coraline tattoo. I envy your mm-hmm. your commitment. Um, and I do think I do think a little cute. button yeah. or something could not could yeah. actually be kind of cute. I just I'm not a tattoo mm-hmm. person, but um. But, like, I don't know. I want, like, the other mother's, like, spid- spidery, crusty face, like, on my ass cheek. Her jawline. <laughs> Just... uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, fucking yeah. tectonic plates. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, so do we want to get a little bit into our regularly yeah, scheduled course. program? Yeah, um... of so, so here on this podcast, we do, um, as, as you heard earlier, we do chocolate and vanilla with Jen. And then at the end here, we do a couple of little, we do fuck, marry, kill. We do what would you eat and drink? What, and what would you follow the movie up with? Just sort of as a way to round mm-hmm. out, I don't know, the movie. So to start off, uh, what about food and okay, drink? Okay, so I haven't done much thought for this, honestly. Um, I, okay. I'm going to say you go the easier route for food. Um and you do like a big mm-hmm. breakfast for dinner kind of thing. Right. I so I wrote down yeah. all of the foods that appear in the movie just out of curiosity. And they have that like dank roast, if you want chicken, roast chicken Thanksgiving go feast for it. type thing. Right. Where, where like it's like mm-hmm. mashed potatoes yeah. and vegetables. You get an and, like, actual that's, that's gravy train like that. But them. like also Oh my god, this movie yeah. makes my mouth water though. Like uh-huh. when she's like biting into that chicken, I'm like, oh my god, I need to roast a chicken. <laughs> Henry, get in the chicken um, now. <laughs> also, she drinks a Yeah, right. She also has a mango milkshake, which like what the fuck is a mango milkshake? It's like mango smoothie or yeah, I don't know. 
something milkshake. I don't know. It doesn't make any sense. But if you want to venture into like a mango milkshake, I don't, I don't it would be that hard. Just get like vanilla yeah. ice cream and frozen yeah. mango and blend it. I don't, know. I don't know if that would taste any good. But mango milkshake. They have that birthday mm. cake where they write welcome home so you can have a cake. Um, I hate I hate to say it, but Mr. Bobinski imports all that cheese. Fucking cheese board. Uh, we say it every week, but this would that's be the true. perfect movie to mm-hmm. get a little variety yeah, of cheese. That's like you go to Whole Foods and you get like a more expensive cheese than you'd usually get kind of thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but mm-hmm. right, treat yourself exactly. as as Mr. B would. Um, Miss Bink and Force will have the taffy. I guess if you want to get like saltwater taffy, they drink tea. This could also mm. be a very tea, like tea. I don't know, get a warm cup of tea movie. They do breakfast for dinner, which I agree is like definitely mm-hmm. the best, easiest, and tastiest thing you could probably do. Like mm-hmm. have fucking waffles or something. Um, and then there's popcorn and cotton candy from the mouse circus. At one point when they have no food in the house, Coraline's mom asks if she wants a mustard ketchup salsa wrap, which if you want to dare to make yourself a mustard ketchup salsa wrap, uh, maybe don't. If anyone's feeling really but... bold and wants to, <laughs> let us know if you do. And DM us on Instagram. I'd like to know your experience. I'm sure it can't be great. It's like the <laughs> saddest quesadilla ever. And then at the end, I guess for drinks... Um, she brings out lemonade, but Miss Pink and Forcible yeah. are like pink ladies, so you can make yeah. yourself. A, I will say because I would, I always like to do a, a drink that is not uh, mentioned in the movie, but feels like it could be in the movie, kind of thing, or at least just it hits with the vibe. Mm-hmm. Um, for some reason, to me, this uh, movie felt like a licorice sort of flavor. You know what I mean? So like, oh, for unfortunately, sure. the yeah. only drink that I know how to make with Jaeger is a Jaeger bomb. But also, <laughs> if you start off this movie with a Jaeger bomb, I don't think it'd be the worst thing in the world. Yeah. Yeah, you need to be, like, right, honestly. a little sauced up for this. Um, What is that, like, Uzo. Greek liquor that kind of tastes mm-hmm. like licorice? Well, you could also do, like, an Uzo lemon. Like, if you're going for the pink lemonade, you could do an Uzo lemonade kind of thing. Um, Also... Yeah, it's for the licorice Yeah, vibe. in my head, um, colors-wise, have you ever heard of, like... I th- uh, it's not... I don't think it's Hendrix gin. It's, um... Hold. Yeah. Oh, it's blue? Um, yeah. What's it called? What I also don't called? know what it's called, but the blue um, gin is pretty iconic. Hold on. Who is she? Empress. I say you make, like, some sort of cocktail yeah. with, like, an emp- like Empress gin. Even, like, a gi- um, gin and tonic kind of thing. I think it definitely... But it's blue. Yeah, but it's blue. So it's fun. Yeah, it's blue, so it's fun. Um, I think that'd be kind of a vibe. I know Um, Henry made... Pretty recently, we bought mulling spices, oh, which hot. is like Ooh. cinnamon, allspice, yeah. cloves. So we bought like a fancy thing of, of mulling spices, and then we got a thing of cider. And so we like mulled some cider with spices, and then we added dark rum to it. So like a spiked mulled cider. So like a hot, you know, I think hot alcohol is like very situational. Yeah. Um, but like a hot, a hot spiked cider with this movie just like matches the um, like fall vibes for sure. Yeah, no, you're so as, right. Like, you gotta watch this movie on a crisp October night with yeah. some fucking mold cider. Uh, yeah, I think I think mold cider with like breakfast for dinner sounds mm. really good. Hot, yeah, like some for sure. huge fluffy waffles. Yeah, I'm gonna go with that. And so for fuck Mary and kill, do you? Okay, so I almost think that we can like maybe treat Miss Spink and Forcible as a unit. Yes, I agree. So could we do? Could we do like? Do you want to do, like, the other mother... So, as far as, like, the other world. Because the other father's kind of, like, a non-sentient being. I don't really know. He's, like, kind of, like, an extension of her. Yeah, but, like... So, we could do, like, the... I'd still marry the him other and mother. free him. <laughs> True. But the other mother, and then Miss Spink and Forcible as a unit, and then Mr. Bobinski, who's just a bunch of rats in a trench coat. <laughs> does that... <laughs> does that check out? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> But I think it's pretty obvious because you you fuck Miss Spink and Forcible, exactly. Duh. Yeah, um, you, you marry, marry Mr. Mr. Bobin, <laughs> and then you kill the other mother. Yeah, yeah. too easy. Exactly. Too easy. I, I would live with all of the other rats in like perfect harmony. Yeah, <laughs> just like scampering around eating cheese. Like that's what I do, anyways. <laughs> that's just my daily now. <laughs> I wouldn't have to change for a minute. <laughs> um, um, and then yeah, I mean, like in terms of the. Because it's just two parallel worlds. Yeah, so it's a, it's the, it's the same, same so idea. It doesn't really. Doesn't entirely work for this. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and so then, what would you follow this up with? Okay, again, I didn't put too much thought into this, but this is immediately just where my head goes because it is an incredibly similar movie. Um, I will say though, instead of watching the animated version, you do the live action because you've just watched an anim- not animated, but you know, yeah. not a live action movie. 
Um, I'm going to say you do Alice in Wonderland. Mm. It's just that really mm-hmm. weird. Very similar. Yeah, very similar. She crawls into a portal to another world. It's very quirky. I feel like you can't go back to, like, a very, like, I, I don't want to say normal movie, but, like, sort of typical yeah. movie kind of thing after this. Um, so I feel like Alice in Wonderland is, like, the, the, um, the, just the natural progression kind of thing. That makes sense. Or if you want yeah. li- we've talked about it twice already, but, like, if you wanted to, like, go back to a normal movie just to see the parallels, watch Lady Bird. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> if you want to watch another annoying teenager <laughs> be rude to her mom <laughs> for uh, two hours. Um, but th- this movie always makes me want to watch next, um, the movie Nine, that also came out around this exact period of time. It's not claymation, but it really has that similar vibe. It's like, I don't know if you remember, it was not popular at all, but I was really into it when I was like 11. So it's like very similar (laughs) nostalgic vibes. But it's about those little sack people. It's like, they're like little like brown sack people in like a post-apocalyptic world. I have to Google what you're talking about right now. Elijah Wood voices the main character. It's just called Nine, like the the number Nine. It was also, like, a very, yeah, kind of, like, niche uh, 2009. Oh, produced by Tim Burton. Wait. Yeah. But so that always, this movie uh, kind of holds oh, yeah. the same, occupies the same space in my mind. I don't love it quite as much, but it was, like, the, the movies I was really into, like, when I was that age. Mm-hmm. Um, but so then I, like, got a little, like, kooky with my with my uh, branching no, out. So I was thinking, Coraline does a scavenger hunt mm. to defeat the other mother what movie do i love that also is a big scavenger hunt national treasure <laughs> so basically this is just like things that i'm obsessed with yeah, let's go but with, also include this is a dare like, treasure yeah, hunt dare's picks. <laughs> <laughs> but also if you want to go like a little less uh national treasure the goonies mm. also is like their treasure hunting and their kids i don't know but so those are my thoughts for that one also a movie about a young girl that's a little bit creepy and her name is the title so you've got Coraline, but then also carrie oh ooh, that's a good one and matilda oh that's fun matilda's a, right oh, matilda's so like, a really fun one to i feel like these three could do like Coraline, carrie matilda i don't know to do like girl names or like I don't yeah, know, no. the name of the female protagonist type beat movie um that was my like thought there and then also it's a tv show but also i think if you like Coraline or if you're a neil gaiman fan the good omens tv show so good omens is one of my favorite books written by neil gaiman and um terry pratchett they wrote it together but it's like it's so good and they made a tv show out of it so it's another like neil gaiman from page to screen mm-hmm. situation um, and this, the, the show is like so true to the book. So if you, even if you haven't read the book, I still would suggest it. Um, but it's called Good Omens and it's, I think it's on Amazon. Yeah. Prime, yeah, maybe. I think so. Um, but those were my, that was my more like direct and reasonable, um, suggestion. But those were my thoughts for Coraline. Yeah, I like a lot of those. Yeah. Matilda feels really right now that you mention it. Mm. It's still like quirky like, and, co- um, sort of magical. Yeah. Corky young girl has to get out of her home situation or something like that. (laughs) You know, similar. Yeah, fair enough. Um, And so I gave this a 10 out of 10. I've already said it's in my top 1%, but what would you give it? I'm going to give it like a 7. I'm going to give it a 7. I think if I watched it two more times, I'd probably bump it up to an Uh, Mm 8. But yeah, I, I liked this a lot more than I expected to, honestly. And like I said, it really just held my attention, which I feel like there are certainly nowadays, um, movies don't quite do that. <laughs> mm, yeah, yeah, right. Like, after quarantine and all that stuff, takes a mi- t- takes a lot for me to really get invested in a movie. Yeah, I can't be bothered. <laughs> um, um. But... But thank you all so much for listening. All the links to our social media are in the description below. And definitely DM us with things you want to hear us talk about in the future. Uh, a couple people asked for Coraline, which is why we kind of like felt compelled to do this this week. So everything you you know tell us, we keep track of it all. We write it all down and we really care. We love to talk to you guys too. Like every person who DMs us just to say like, nice pod. It like 
makes my day. <laughs> um, so we, we love hearing from y'all. Stay tuned. Stay tuned for next week for our big finale of Oogie Spooky Kooky. And keep an eye out on our um, social media because I think we're going to try to live stream mm-hmm. our next. Emily and I are going to be in person together for the first time in a while, which is so exciting. So we're going to um, try to live stream our next episode and like in full costume and booze in hand. Um, and if you guys can, like, tune in and, like, ask us questions on the fly, that would be so fucking fun, mm-hmm. I think. If we can all just, like, hang out and watch a movie together. Um, so, it, as soon as we plan that, I'll try to put it in the description of this episode, but also I'll try to put up, uh, like, on our website, on our social medias, mm-hmm. um, stuff like that. So, definitely keep your eyes out for that for some time. Um, next weekend we'll be doing that, uh, which would be the, the date for that would probably be, um, October 23rd mm-hmm. It's that Saturday. So October 23rd, mark your fucking calendars and tune into our live stream and come hang on with us while we watch a good movie. <laughs> uh, thanks for, thanks for listening and goodbye and good night 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 and goodbye.